everyone. Um, welcome back to another video. I know it has been a long time since I've done any kind of um, any kind of video like this. My life's been very, very busy. Um, I basically went back to school for eight weeks to get some extra training to try and get a better job and improve my standard of living. Um, <clears throat> but today I thought I'd make a quick little video that has to do with these modules right here. One of them has is very well established and has been around for a very long time. One of them came out at the tail end of 2020, right around the time the Nationals took place. And one of them is very new to the market that you can custom build yourself if you know how, or you can buy it from uh, pre-assembled from Happy Models. So what are all of these things? Today I'm going to be doing a quick little comparison between TBS Crossfire, TBS Tracer, and um, this is Express LRS. Not the, not the R9 module, but the 2.4 gigahertz module. So I'm going to talk about what, all the, what these three modules are and what they bring to the table. Now, I know what some of you are going to say, and that is Ryan, or Pilot Command. Why isn't Immersion RC Ghost in this mix? Well, simple. I don't have a Ghost module. That's all there is to it. Couldn't get my hands on one for this video. So anyway, let's get started. Um, let's start with Crossfire. So Crossfire, this is a 900 megahertz control link that was basically made, for, as far as I know, specifically for first-person view drones. First-person view drones have a lot of car they're made they're made of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is a conductive is a con is a conductive material. Uh, radio frequencies don't travel well through conductive materials. So, TBS, you know, many years ago, back I think like 2014, 2015, they developed TBS Crossfire to be like the best control link for drones. And with this thing being 900 megahertz, that means that you can fly extremely long distances, even on this thing's 250 milliwatt max power output, and still have con have, still have good control over a drone. Like in certain scenarios, unless you're like flying through a bunch of buildings, um, you can outfly your video using this control link. So, and for a while, this had the lowest possible latency on a mini quad, because whereas before, everybody was using FR Sky control link for 2.4, two, FR Sky 2.4, I think has like a 50 hertz refresh rate. This Crossfire, at its best, has 150 hertz refresh rate. And that's kind of going to be the theme of this video is this term like hertz and refresh rate. Well, what does that mean? Basically, in as far as this industry is concerned in layman's terms, basically the, the higher that refresh rate, so like 150 hertz, that means that this crossfire signal is sending out a signal to your drone 150 times a second. The more signals are be, that are being sent out, the more precise you can be with you can be with your drone and you can make better precise movements on the sticks and overall it's a lower latency link. So, Crossfire maxes out at 250 hertz and then Immersion RC Ghost comes out saying it's a 2.4 lower link so you can turn down the latency, the latency down to like 50 hertz or even lower than that and get really long range on 2.4 gigahertz or you can crank it up to their pure race mode and get um, close, I think, it was, I think there's They've got a receiver that I don't know. I don't know the max output refresh rate on Ghost, but I think they I think they can hit 500. I mean, I know they have a receiver that's 500 hertz refresh rate ready, but I'm not sure if that's been implemented yet. So TBS responded by making this. This is TBS Tracer, and this was aimed. This was made to basically compete with Immersion RC Ghost. So this is a 200 this is a 2.4 gigahertz control link not a 900 megahertz control link so this guy um, has a 250 hertz refresh rate and it is locked at 250 hertz you cannot turn it down you cannot turn it up this module is locked at 250 hertz and this kind of tbs what kind of goal of this was to have it compete with ghost but still be able to fly a long range at lower latency. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of long range testing, but I did do a comparison video, I'll link it down below, between um, Crossfire and 
um, Tracer just on a race course, and Ghost, I mean, I'm sorry, and Tracer was faster than Crossfire because I had more control over the drone. Now, so, okay, because, so just to reiterate, Crossfire, really good long range, but only has a uh, 150 hertz max refresh rate. TBS Tracer, pretty good range for a 2.4 link, further than something like FR Sky's 2.4 control link, but it has a it, but it has a higher refresh rate, so a lower latency. So, what does Express LRS bring to the table? They bring 500 hertz refresh rate to the table. Yeah, this has double the refresh rate of this, and Tracer already feel felt really good. So I know what you're, I know what some of you are saying, dude. It's it's 250 hertz refresh rate. Now you're going up to 500. It's like, can you even feel a difference? Can you even feel 500 hertz refresh rate? Do I? I just switched over to Tracer. You know, am I really gonna feel a difference going switching from this to this? And the answer is yes. Yes, you will. So. Um, I recently did a, a race called the, uh, I, I recently competed in a Freedom Spec race back in, uh, back in May of this year, and I wanted to use this, but this module wasn't working so well at the time, so I ended up having all my quads ran uh, TBS Tracer that day, and it felt, the, the quads felt really good, don't get me wrong, but they felt kind of heavy in the air. Now, I know what you're thinking, oh, they, you're running Freedom Spec, it's, you're only running 3S on Mosaic like and take 6S, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I know that. But I was like, I feel, I still feel like the drone could be a little bit tighter. Then, put this guy in, put um, Express LRS receivers in my two switchbacks, and yeah, it, it felt, the drones felt a lot crisper. Same weight, same drone, same everything. The only thing I changed was the receiver. And I can tell you from experience, that between these two, I can feel a difference with this compared to this. It's not an astronomical difference, like going from this, like going to this from something like this. I would say, I don't know, between these two, this is probably, I don't know, five or 10% crisper on the, on the sticks than this is, but it is a difference and I am faster with this compared to this. So, so yeah, and also too, with Express LRS, you can turn down the latency. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how low this thing will go, um, but uh, the guy who built this for me, um, he goes by Calculus TX, um, he's flown out like several kilometers and has, Never lost, he's never lost his drums, never fail safe at all using this module. Now I can't do, you know, you know, four or five kilometers at 500 hertz, but I think it can do like two or three kilometers at 250 hertz or something. You can drop it even lower, kind of like a version RC Ghost. So to have access to this, you can build it yourself or uh, Happy Model sells. Um, a couple of different variations of this. I think they sell a 900 module and a 2.4 module, and they just released a Whoop board that has a um, that has an Express LRS 2.4 GHz receiver built into it. I've ordered one from Pyro. It will be in yeah, as soon as I get it in and build that drone up. I will make a video about it. But anyway, um, I know so I've been talking here for about nine minutes. So let's wrap up this video on who are these things, who are these modules for. Um, why would you pick any of them? So, let's start with Crossfire because this is the easiest one of the bunch. Um, if if you are someone who does a lot of long range flying, like several kilometers away from yourself, you're in the air 10 or 15 minutes at the time, and you want the best c control link for your drone known to man, go with Crossfire. Crossfire is the gold standard for long range, hands down. I don't care what anybody else says. Um, everybody, I mean, Crossfire, like, they, they've been in the long range game as far back as I can remember when mini quads first started to become a thing. I mean, this Crossfire was around 
you know, back in 2015 when all this stuff was kind of just starting to build and grow into what it is now. Um, if you never want to worry about, you know, just fail saving at all, even if you don't fly long range and you just fly close in, go with Crossfire. Crossfire, because it's 900, because it's 900 megahertz compared to something like G4, um, it's going to have much better signal penetration. It's going to be able to go through more things and still give you complete control over your drone. If you are a racing pilot and you run Betaflight or Falco X and you want the lowest latency known to man and that has that gives you really good um, packet retention, doesn't suffer a whole lot from packet loss, um, go with Express LRS. Um, Mark Spatz from UAV Tech has done some testing um, with all these modules in his video and just kind of just from listening to what he has to say and talking to other people, apparently this has um, the high or the lowest latency. It's like lower than like five seconds. Uh, I mean, sorry, it, it's lower than five milliseconds of latency with very little packet loss, which is a big deal in, in terms of beta flight. So yeah, if you're a racer, go with Express LRS. Or if you just want the lowest latency possible in a control link, Express LRS is the way to go. So, where does that leave Tracer? Well, if you are a, a, a pilot who flies uh, KISS flight controllers and you want really low latency, go with Tracer. I have tried to get KISS to work with Express LRS and as of the time of this video, it just doesn't work. Um, all three of these modules use the Crossfire control link protocol. So I think basically the developers of this tried to reverse engineer uh, Crossfire to get it to work. And I've, I've tried to get it to work with KISS. Me and the, the guy who, uh, me and Calculus TX, who built this, we, we went back and forth and we just couldn't get it to work. So right now, all my KISS stuff is running Tracer, which I mean, it works, it's fine, but it's not quite as crisp as this is like if I if I had to pick between Express LRS or Tracer, I would run Express LRS every time. The only downside I would say actually we we'll go back to this guy to running this is actually updating your firmware. You can do firmware updates, but it's kind of weird. So it's like to get to update firmware on this and the receivers, you actually have to. This is, this has a Wi-Fi module in it, so you have to hook this up to your computer via Wi-Fi, and they have it configured to go through this, but it's kind of clunky right now because this is like the newest module that's on the market right now. And, you know, it's like certain firm, and all the firmwares are in release candidate. All this stuff is beta testing and stuff right, and stuff right now. So it's not quite as refined as this is. Like this, you update the firmware in this guy the same way as you do um, TBS Crossfire. It works exactly the same. Like actually, to put it simply, when I first switched to Tracer, all my stuff was running Crossfire. I literally wired up a Tracer receiver to a drone, took the Crossfire module out, put this guy in, and boom. Just, it worked. It worked right out of the box. This guy has had some problems. Like, um, for example, they used to run this at 250 milliwatts, and that like did something to the transmitter, it made it not work anymore. It stopped. It stopped talking to my Radio Master TX16X Max, and just yeah, it kind of died. So now I only run this at so I only run this at 100 milliwatts. This isn't this isn't the old one I had. This is a completely new one um, that Calculus TX built for me. So yeah, I'm only running this at 100 milliwatts, but that's all the range I need because I'm primarily doing this for racing and not super long range. This thing I've run it on TBS is ludicrous power output, which I think is like one watt. I'm not quite sure how powerful it is, but um, I've yet to have it melt or explode on me right now. So I guess for, if you want something that's really refined and you're okay with sacrificing like a little bit of performance just to make you know living with the thing a bit easier, then I would say TBS Tracer is for you. If you want the fastest control link known to man at this point right now, and you're okay with dealing with kind of some of the bugs and kind of the nature of like updating the firmware and getting this thing to work, 
to go with Express LRS. I know for me personally, all of my racing rigs are running this. Both my switchbacks and as mi and both of my uh, spec built tiny trainers are running Express LRS. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope y'all found this inform I hope y'all found this information uh, helpful in some way, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Have a nice day.